Hey everybody, it's Faith with Katie. I'm Katie Souza, and welcome to today's broadcast where you're gonna come to understand that you already have authority and you don't even know it. You're already experiencing prophetic encounters and you don't even know it. You know, something happens when revelation opens up your understanding. That instant that you hear a word in the scriptures from a, a teacher, from a guest like Robert Hodgkin, who is on the broadcast today, the moment you hear a word, it will open up and you immediately can go from this level of authority and prophetic to this level. It happens that fast just with your understanding being cracked open and brought out of its box. That's what's going to happen today on the broadcast. So listen, you need to share the broadcast. If you're watching via YouTube or Facebook, please, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't followed us, if you haven't pushed the notification bell, please do because you need to be notified when we go live so you do not miss these moments. If you're watching via Direct TV on channel 379, Welcome to the broadcast, but also get on Facebook, get on YouTube, Katie Susan Ministries on both so that you can chat in, you can become a part of the broadcast today. In fact, chat in where you're watching from and give a shout out to Robert Hodgkin, who is our guest today. Look, some of you may not even know who Robert is. He's already been on my broadcast, but he's been on Sid Roth. He travels the world. He's seen signs, wonders, and miracles of incredible proportions. He does big huge conferences overseas and in the States, and you need to get to know him because today he's going to unlatch and unlock and bring the keys for you to be able to instantly excel in your authority and in the prophetic realm. Okay, now before we bring Robert on, let's watch today's Selfie Miracle testimony video. Check it out. Tell us your name. Pat, what did you have? And speak loud so everybody can hear you on the phone. What did you have? I had skin cancer on my face, and you called it out. And some things actually fell off my face in the next week. So it was a word of knowledge in a meeting? Where was the meeting at? Kansas. Kansas? How long did you have the skin cancer? I didn't even know I had it until you called it out, but then the stuff fell off my face. So you, it was developing, and you didn't even know it. And then what did it just peel off like layers of skin? Wow. Just like that. Thank you, Lord. Let me give God a praise for that. Woo! Okay, you know when God's at work. When cancer falls off, literally falls off somebody's face. Okay, now I've seen stuff like that happen. I remember a lady that had corns in her feet. And I actually had a word of knowledge about corns on your feet are being removed. And she reached down. And she started rubbing where the corns were. They were very painful. She started rubbing them through the sock. And all of a sudden, she felt them being loosened up. So she took her sock off, and they came out. They had fallen off her feet at the root, at the root. And then the little holes, she looked, and she saw these little holes in her feet. And she was like, oh, man, that's where the root of the corn was. And within half an hour, even the holes had filled in, okay? I remember a lady who had brain cancer. And I prayed for her. And literally, as I'm praying for her, a huge glob of the cancer came dripping out her nose. All right, this stuff is real. I was in prison, and a man with colon cancer had the cancer like pouring out of his side. God is on the move. You need to put your faith on God doing the impossible for growths falling off. In fact, I decree that over you. Growths falling off right now. I command them to die and to fall off. I judge the idolatrous altars in your life that would cause these growths to happen on your body. Warts, tumors, any kind of growth at all. I judge it in the court of heaven. Wow, I feel the heat like hitting my face right now. The anointing is in the room. I judge those growths right now and I command them to fall off. I command the cancer to come out of your body. I speak to your dirt body and I command it, vomit out that disease, vomit out that cancer, vomit out that infection, vomit out that tumor, vomit it out now in the name of Jesus right now. 
right now. Wow, I feel the, the anointing on my face. If that's you, you need to chat in. You need to chat in. I even saw growth right now shrinking in size. I remember running my hands over a woman's arm once and having her renounce idolatry. In fact, do it right now. Just say, I renounce all idolatry in my bloodline. Right now, just say it. I renounce all idolatry in my bloodline, all witchcraft, and all serpentry in my bloodline in the name of Jesus. And when she prayed that prayer, I ran my hand over her arm and she had eight growths, tumors on her arm. Five of them immediately disappeared. The, the remaining three shrunk over 60%. And by the next day, they were gone. So Father, I thank you. We were repeating that miracle right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chat in if you had an encounter during this prayer. Amen. I felt the glory. So also, don't forget, if you've ever had a miracle of any kind through this broadcast, through one of our resources, through a meeting that you've been at, please get out your phone, put it in the landscape version like this, and do a two-minute video about what was happening with your body, what is going on with you, what you've had to deal with, what kind of pain levels it gave you, what kind of limited mobility it gave you, and what the doctor said about it, and what happened when Jesus touched you, and then send it to selfies at katiesouza.com. Com. KatieSouza.com? That's right. KatieSouza.com. Okay. Hey, before we bring Robert Hodgkin on today to show you, you already have authority. You're already having prophetic encounters. I want to talk to you about Superhuman, guys. Superhuman is our new master class, and man, it is off the charts. I want you to check out this promo right now so that you can sign up and join me as you learn how to totally defeat death and become younger more energetic, more filled with strength and vitality. Check this out. Hey everybody, it's Katie Souza inviting you to join my brand new masterclass, Superhuman, the life and immortality of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be superhuman? The definition means above human, divine, exceedingly above normal human power and capability. Believe it or not, guys, because of Jesus, because of his work on the cross and in the resurrection, we have the ability to be superhuman. The Bible even talks about in Colossians that Paul was able to preach the gospel because of the superhuman power God so mightily enkindled in him. Think about all that he went through. How was he able to go through shipwrecks and stonings and beatings and whippings and all that he suffered? Because he was filled with superhuman power. Yes, there are examples of all kinds of people in the Bible who are superhuman. I'm going to be talking about them all. Yes, this amazing course, Superhuman, the life and immortality of Jesus Christ is so filled with breakthrough that will bring you life, longevity, health, healing, divine health. You're going to be able to walk in it in every single session. I'm going to walk you through activations. You're going to take communion. You're going to receive impartations. And we go deep into worship. Join me. It's my brand new masterclass, Superhuman, the life and immortality of Jesus Christ. 11 sessions, guys. And in each session, there's like tons of activations, prayer work, taking communion, releasing the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, releasing the light of Jesus Christ, breaking off the demonic spirits of like giants and witches and Jezebel that actually sap and siphon off your youth. It's true. I'm going to show that to you that that really happens. If all of a sudden you see yourself aging and you're like, what is going on? I wake up and I look 10 years older. You probably have a witch craft curse on you or a witch going after you to siphon you off like gas, literally, and steal from your rivers of living water. I show you how to break free from all of that. It's incredible stuff. Look, in this end time, it's like Psalm 110 says that the day that God puts Christ's enemies as a footstool under his feet is the day that the army of the Lord, that's us, volunteer freely, freely because they're clothed with the dew of his youth. 
We cannot volunteer freely for, an, uh, for a war unless we are clothed with the dew of his youth, unless we are energetic and not crippled, not diseased, uh, unless we're strong, unless we're youthful. And this class will help you tap into it. You're going to hear stuff you've probably never heard before. It's it's going to blow your grid and you are going to increase in, in the stamina that you have, in the vitality you have, and you will actually look younger. I believe I, I look younger than I have, you know, ever. In my 50s, I believe I look better in my 60s than I did in my 50s. So it's all because God enkindles mightily superhuman power in all of his people. All right. So one more time with the QR code. There it is. Guys, and it's 11 sessions plus three Q&A sessions that go with it. So 14 sessions. I do activations in every one of them. It's completely awesome. Let the link pop down and sign up today. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Okay. All right, guys. Let's bring on one of my most favorite human beings in the whole planet, Robert Hodgkin. You know, I was just saying um, how we've known each other for 18 years, and I'm telling you, you're like a hidden gem. More people need to know you. I was so glad when you, when Sid Roth had you on last year and that you're touring of the world. You've always done that, but it's grown and increased. You get thousands of people now that gather to hear you speak. Uh, you deserve even more because every time I talk to you, I'm like, oh, what? What did you just say? Repeat that? Oh, tell me that again. Oh, my gosh. Those are the kinds of things that responses I have whenever we get together and just start revelating. So I'm really looking forward to this show. You were here not too long ago, but welcome back. Thank you, my friend. Always great to see you. And I feel the same about you. You have always stretched me and encouraged me. And I love your revelation. And I love how even when you're going after the crazy stuff, you always stay rooted and grounded in the word. I actually was getting excited and wanting to sign up for your superhuman course. It sounds great. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to send it to you so we can all become superhuman. I mean that that's not even a joke. I, I, I'm believing for that big time. So I'll send it to you and make sure you get it. Okay, so today I know people want to hear this because so many people feel powerless. They don't feel like they're hearing God. They don't feel like they can release any type of authority over the enemy. They feel like they're under the feet of the enemy. And they don't even realize that they are encountering God. But they haven't recognized it. But you've tapped into this. And these are part of your words for 2024 even. Yeah, absolutely. God's given me five prophetic words for 2024. And the one we're going to talk about today, I'm super excited to share with you and all of your viewers, because it's exactly what you said, Katie. It's a it's a, it's a reawakening, not an awakening, not a revival, but a reawakening and a reminding of the authority that we have as believers. One of the greatest revivals God is looking to initiate in the earth is amongst his people. It's a revival of authority, but I want to be careful how I say that because yeah. it's not a revival of authority in the sense of he's going to give us authority we don't have. It's going to be a revival of the awareness of authority oh, every believer has mm. in Christ. Come on. That's so good. On the last show, you brought in that we weren't going to get, and if you haven't watched it, you need to go get, you need to go watch it. It's about uh, the spoils, I believe. Is that correct, guys? I want to know the right title. But um, you said something similar to the fact of it's not that we're going to get paid back everything that the enemy robbed us. We're going to get beyond what the enemy robbed us, what we never had in the first place. So now you're saying the same thing as far as authority. You're saying it's not like we're going to get authority. We're going to understand the authority we already have and actually begin to operate in it. Yeah, absolutely. One of the spoils of war in 2024 is going to be the reminding, the revelation, the reawakening, the remembering of the authority that we have. And you know me and you're similar, Katie. I love words and I love what God does with words. And he, we're going to remember the authority that we have. And as we remember the authority that we have, we are going to be remembered as the body of Christ. The members of the body of Christ are going to wake up and begin moving in this great authority. 
You know, this word came to me at the end of 2023 because there's been so many storms waging in the world. There's been storms waging against us as individuals, our health, our finances, our relationships, our marriages, our prodigals. We've seen storms raging against our cities and our nations. We've seen storms raging against our ability to trust in authority figures like presidents and and, and healthcare figures Mm -hmm. and media. Storm after storm after storm has been raging, Katie. And what the Lord spoke to me for 2024 is where we have seen the storms, we will now see the opportunity. And where we see the opportunity, we will step into our authority and see the victory. And I'm telling you, everybody who's watching, everywhere you've seen storms, everywhere you've seen the enemy in his storms whipping up resistance, hindrances, delays, stealing, devouring, killing, destroying, those storms, a perspective shift is coming. And you're going to go from seeing the storms to seeing the opportunity in the storm. You're going to step into the authority that today God is reminding you and helping you remember that you have. And when you operate in that authority, you're going to see the storm stilled. You're going to see the storms bow and you're going to see your victory against the enemy come forth. I think that's what was happening. You sent this really powerful scripture, and I've read this scripture, meditated on it so much, and I think that's what was happening in Mark 4 when there was the storm, and Jesus is asleep in the boat, and the disciples are totally freaked out. They had totally forgotten the authority that they had built up for all their years of ministering with Jesus, and he had to get up and rebuke the storm himself And then remind them, it's like, oh, ye of little faith. It's like, you forgot who you were in this storm, and I had to do it for you. Is is that what's happening now in this year? Absolutely. You know, Jesus will always be in our boat. Jesus is amazing. He'll never forsake us. He'll never abandon us. He'll never leave us. But one of the things he wants to do that we're talking about, Katie, is he wants to remind us. He wants to help us remember the authority that we have. And in Mark 4, when this happens, remember, they have a word of the Lord that they're going to the other side, that they're going to go minister on the other side. But they get into the partway through the lake, the storm whips up, and it's real. It's significant. There is impact from the storm. The wind is whipping. The waves are crashing. Water's coming into the boat. And all the disciples see is the effect of the storm. Mm. And they go running to Jesus and say, Master, Master, do you not care that we are perishing? Mm. In other words, God help, don't you see that we're dying here, man? And Jesus gets up, immediately rebukes the storm, as you said, Katie, but then he turns to them and he says, do you still have so little faith? Do you still have so little faith? Do you still have no faith? Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And fear is always an indication that we're seeing the storm, not the opportunity. And when God speaks and says, do you still have no faith? You nailed it, Katie. He's saying, hey, we've been walking together for years now. And I'm I'm here. Because remember, they weren't just believers. They were disciples. And we tend to use believer and disciple synonymously, and they're not. A believer is someone who believes. A disciple is one who's willing to be trained. So when Jesus says in Mark 4 to James and John and Simon and Andrew, come follow me, notice he doesn't say, come believe in me. He saw that they believed, so he's inviting them in their belief to be disciples. And what is a disciple? It's one who Jesus mentors, and New Testament Holy Spirit mentors us, in how to release the kingdom into the earth through our lives, how to do kingdom That's why Jesus' initial message was repent for the kingdom of heaven was at hand. He wasn't saying, hang your head, you guilty sinner, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We tend to think repentance means feeling guilty about sin, or we even tend to think repentance means turning from sin. That's not what repentance is. Now, in true repentance, we will always turn from sin, but turning from sin is the result of repentance. What repentance actually is, is changing the way we think. Come on. And so we'll change the way we think about a situation, realize sin is stealing from us, devouring us, and we'll turn away from that. But Jesus' original message, and still to this day, is change the way you think about everything because a better system, a more powerful system that you can be plugged into through me is now available. So when he turns to the disciples in the storm and says, well, of course I'll still the storm for you. But remember, 
I'm here to mentor you, rabbi you, disciple you. Yes. Because you'll be my body one day. Yes. I want to teach you how to do these things. So why do you still have no faith? He's not asking, why don't you have faith in me? They radically had faith in him. They went running to him because they knew he could do it. Yes. He wanted to remind them, just like he wants to remind every single one of you watching right now, that in Christ, mm. in his Thank power, you, by his authority, with his Holy Spirit, you have the ability to still the storm. Yeah, you know, okay, I think this is an epidemic. I do, because I, I go to meetings and people come up to me, you know, I, you know, I have this and, and this happens and I, I can't get the breakthrough and they just f seem so um, to the point where they absolutely have no faith in themselves which is good because we shouldn't have faith in ourselves, but they need to shift and say, but, but I have Christ in me. He lives in me 24 and seven. Psalm eight has given me dominion over all the works of his hands. I, I have that and nobody seems to have, there's been a, a lack of a majority of the body of Christ clicking into that mode. Do you feel that that's true? Yeah, it, and it's one of the main assignments of the enemy. And it's so key in that Mark four scripture that Jesus is set, first thing he says to them is, why are you afraid? Mm. And there has been such an assignment of fear from uh, from uh, the Satan through the media, through governments, through everything these last few years. Because when we take on fear, we're taking on the lie of powerlessness. Another epidemic oh, wow. right Say now, that, Katie, wait, in addition to fear. Say that again. Say that again. It, when we take yeah. on fear. When we take on fear we're taking on the lie of powerlessness. Gosh. We feel afraid because we feel there's nothing we can do. And you're correct, Katie, you said this, there's nothing we can do in ourselves, but we're not in ourselves. We're in Christ and Christ is in us. Um, come so on. fear, what is the first manifestation of fear in the Bible? When Adam has chosen to separate himself from God, wow. God shows up and says, Adam, where are you? God wasn't confused. He knew where Adam was. He wanted, to, he wanted Adam to see where he was, separated from God. Wow. And Adam's response is, I was hiding because I was afraid. Wow. Whenever there's fear, it's an indication that in that situation, we're not walking with and trusting God. We're not trusting who we are in, with, and for God. We have chosen to separate ourselves from God. I'm not talking about losing salvation here, Katie. I'm talking about God loves to highlight things to help us. Fear is an indication that we have taken on the lie of powerless, which, by the way, is the same reason there's an epidemic of anger in the world right now. Wow. Anger is what we take on because it makes us feel powerful, but it's it's not it's power for the wrong team. We take on anger because we feel powerless, but when I rage against it all, that makes me feel powerful. Well, wow. maybe but it's power for the wrong team. What God wants us to do is take on his peace, move in his power by his authority through his Holy Spirit and see the opportunity in the storm, step into that opportunity by moving in the authority we already have and commanding that storm to be still. And I think even additionally, guys, the anger can also be like your anger, the angry that you're powerless and you start maybe even being angry at God feeling like, I'm powerless. Why aren't you doing anything? It's the same thing that, you know, the disciples said to Jesus in the boat. Master, wake up. Don't wake up, meaning do something. Don't you care that we are perishing? But yet Jesus, again, he's given us the authority to take care of the problem ourselves. Let's minister out of this place before we even go on any further. I want to break fear and, and, and the fear coming from feeling powerless off of people and and impart to them the truth that we have everything we need to do anything because Christ lives in us and he's already accomplished it all. Let's Amen. minister out of that place. Go. Yeah, everybody remember what the word of God says. You've not been given a spirit of fear, but one of love, power, and a sound mind. So fear is never from God. So right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I break every assignment of fear off of you. Jesus. I break every lie of powerlessness off of you. And I declare you have not been given a spirit of fear. So fear Jesus. go right now in Jesus's name. Intimidation go right now 
in Jesus' name. I cancel every hex, every jinx, every spell, every incantation sent against you. I declare every curse sent against you must fall to the ground harmless and ineffective. Any assignment of fear sent against you by words written or spoken, through potions, through objects, through rituals, through sacrifices, they're bound, broken, and defeated by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I declare... You have not received a spirit of fear. Man, I see somebody, you're actually shaking your head right now. There's been like this swirl of fear that's been sent by witchcraft against you, wow. and it's breaking off. It's wow. like the sun is shining, the clouds are dispersing, and all of a sudden you're beginning to think clearly, and you are remembering who you are, you are remembering who your God is, and I am telling you, the enemy is terrified. Start speaking to your situations now. Start commanding those storms to bow and that's for every single one of you whether you feel the manifestation or not fear is broken off of you you have received a spirit of love the ability to know God's love and to love him in return in that know who he is know who you are move in power and the first thing that gives you the ability to do is to have self-control a sound mind or self-control so right now where fear has come against you the first storm I want you to take authority over is fear and as you're getting the clearing you speak to that fear and you say fear be rebuked fear be broken storm of fear shut up and be still and never return in Jesus' name God, and you're going right, to feel the shift. Right now, right now. And I speak to the stronghold in your mind of fear that you allowed to be built like a demonic structure in your mind by meditating on being afraid of a situation, feeling overwhelmed and overpowered, doubting that you had the authority to break through it, being exhausted because you've tried to break through and it hasn't worked, mm -hmm. where all you needed to do is to keep on being tenacious. I speak to the strongholds, the demonic structures in your mind that have been built through those times, and I judge them. I release Holy Spirit and doing his power against them and command them to break apart right now. I dissolve every one of those tombs. I dissolve and break apart and destroy every stronghold right now. And I impart to you with spirit of faith, faith, tenacity, eagerness, excitedness, a, a, a spirit of knowing, of that knowing in you of your authority in Christ in the name of Jesus now, now, now. In Jesus' name now. You know, uh, Joyce Myers said something really interesting when she said, just do it afraid if you're afraid. To me, what that means is, is that if you feel like I don't have the authority, I'm powerless, we'll start rising up and no matter how you feel inside, no matter how much you doubt it's actually even working, start just taking scriptures about, you know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Things like that, you know, Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy and just start decreeing them. Even if you feel afraid, do it afraid. And eventually that fear will back down because you are decreeing the word of God. And when you decree a thing, it is established. The Bible says that. Katie, I'm getting a word of knowledge for yep. somebody. There's somebody watching, and your fear is not, it doesn't feel like intimidation, doesn't feel like, oh, I'm afraid of the enemy. The word God, the Lord just gave me is you've had the fear of needing perfection. You fear wow. that things aren't perfect enough to step out in, so you hesitate, and wow. you're waiting till things are perfect. But what Katie just said is so profound. Simply start. And you're going to notice as you because you're going to recognize the pattern in your life. You get all these great ideas, you get all these downloads, and you're waiting for everything to be perfect or you to make everything perfect. There's even a book that you've been getting a download on, and you're waiting for everything to be perfect before you start writing. And I'm telling you, oh, wow. that's a fear of perfection. And it's great to want to do things with excellence, but you become more and more excellent by doing. So step out. Now, rebuke that fear of perfection. I declare you do not need to be perfect. The perfect one came on your behalf. And in Jesus' name, I give you a grace to step out from where you are and do everything God has given you to do. And I'm telling you, he's speaking to me right now that all of his promises are yes and amen, and all of his gifts gifts are without repentance. He will not take anything back. Every word, you haven't missed it. Simply start now, step out from where you are, and you'll see a fruition of every promise. Okay, I felt a heavy anointing on the book word, and I got a, I got a, a piggyback word on it, and I feel like you think that you have to have it perfected before you sit down to start typing, and it's causing you to go into procrastination.
But what's happening is you don't understand the book writing process. It's, Habakkuk says, write down the revelation, make it plain on tablets so Harold can run with it. It's as you sit down at the computer, you ask me, you ask, you ask Robert, you ask anybody who, who normally is a writer and writes many books. It's as you sit down at that computer that the Holy Spirit will start moving through you to give you fresh new revelation concerning the ideas and the biblical precepts that you already have in your mind. And it's then that the pent up gates will open up and the flood of information and of that book will just be downloaded to you and you won't even be able to keep up typing. I feel this is a strong word for somebody. You know, you and I, we're, it's so funny, we do this a lot, you and I, when we get together. Um, we sat down and we won't say the person's name, but right. they're the mother of, a, of an extremely famous person. And we piggyback prophesied to her for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes. And each word gained strength as we went back and forth, back and forth. It was very encouraging to her. So um, receive these words. These are for real, guys. Now, I want to talk about, you said people are also having prophetic experiences. And they don't know it. What does that yeah, look like? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, this this whole word that we're sharing about seeing the the opportunity in the storm and stepping into your authority, realizing you have everything you need in Christ to deal with the storm in front of you. This actually came out of a prophetic experience I had. And I want to share this experience with you. And then Katie and I are going to unpack not so much my experience, but how you're already having these prophetic experiences. Um, I live in the Sonoran Desert. My wife and I live in the, the greater Phoenix Valley. And here, you know, obviously it's crazy hot most of the year, but then we always do in the winter get a cooling off. And we had come into, it was uh, November, early December, we come into our annual cooling off. And I'm not a super mechanic -y type guy, but I do know that when the temperature drops, it, it affects the tire pressure in my car or in every car. Um, with the temperature change, the pressure changes. But one day I was out driving and I noticed the tire pressure warning light came on for all of my tires that they were at dangerously low levels. So I thought, oh, I got to fill my tires as soon as I can. I went from gas station to gas station to gas station the next three days while I was out running errands trying to find a gas station with a working air pump. And I couldn't find a single working air pump. I finally found one on the third day and it was a for pay pump, which was fine, but it was difficult. It cost a buck fifty in quarters for each Jeez. tire. And the challenge was it was just difficult to come up with six dollars worth of quarters. I didn't have 24 quarters on me. Oh and the lady at the till didn't really want to make change. So long story short, it was this very challenging thing to get my tires actually filled with air. Yeah. I go home, Katie. That night I'm in bed, and all of a sudden I sit up straight up in bed, and the Lord's spoke to me and reminded me that the previous year Christmas, my brother-in-law, my wife's brother Q, had given us a tire inflator, this really cool <laughs> box that you plug into the wall and you plug into your tire and you set the pressure you want and it automatically inflates it. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh my gosh, I completely forgot that we had that thing. <laughs> I'm down in the garage in the middle of the night going through every cabinet, every drawer, every shelf. I find it and it's as soon as I find it, and I wrote this down, oh my God. this as soon as I found it and realized I had the tool I needed all along, I didn't need all that running around, the wow. Lord immediately spoke to me. And this is what a prophetic experience is. God will let you go through something to, to come into a prophetic understanding of a season that we're in. Because as soon as I found that tire inflator, the Lord spoke to me and said, it is the same with my church. They keep forgetting that they already have all they need to fix the problems they are dealing with. It's time to stop looking out there. It's time to remember to simply pull out the tools I have given you. So that was the prophetic experience that ended up not only giving me the word I just read to you that he spoke to me, but this bigger word about how where we've seen storms, now we'll see opportunities because we'll be willing to step into the the authority that we remember we've always had will speak to those storms we'll see the victory and we'll see the storm bow okay so look i I'll keep this little comment short but I, I I don't I can't tell you how many times people have let me use their car 
and there's no air in the tires. And I've done the same thing, driven, driven, driven around to try to find a, an air pump. But here's what I love about what you just said. Did you hear what Robert just proclaimed? He said, God will let you go through something so that you can finally recognize the prophetic season you're in. We've got to stop fighting what we're going through. I mean, yes, we have to rise up in warfare against demonic resistance, but sometimes we need to get quiet and listen to what God is saying through what appears to be a trying situation because the whole body has been going through this, searching for the machine to fill their tires when they had a brand new one in the box that did it for you on its own that you just need to plug into the tire so it would be done. Um, this is so true. Sometimes we get so frustrated with the situation that we do not see God's wisdom or his revelation through it. So this is one of the ways you're saying that people are having prophetic encounters and they're either not recognizing it or they're cutting it off because they're becoming worked up instead of getting still and listening to see what God wants to say through it. Yeah, absolutely, Katie. Prophetic experiences is one of the least talked about and least understood aspects of the prophetic, where God speaks to us through our experiences. And for like our ministry, one of our strongest prophetic giftings is the son of Issachar anointing, yeah. where God works with us to discern the times we're in so that we can declare it to the global church so they're aware of what God wants to do in any given season and then partner with God to be effective in that season. So a prophetic experience is often how he allows me to begin to understand the season that we're in, the hour that we're in, and what he wants to do with us. To me, prophetic experience is just as valid a way of hearing and receiving from God as, say, a word of knowledge based on a feeling in your body. And everybody who flows in healing miracles know that you can walk into, let's say you walk into the grocery store and all of a sudden your knee hurts and you know you don't have have knee pain, well, that's a word of knowledge. God's giving you knowledge that somebody there has knee pain, be on the lookout for me, wants to heal their knee. Oh. It's the same with prophetic experiences, and I guarantee you, you're having them. You just need to start asking God, speak to me in my experiences as clearly as you speak to me with other words of wisdom, other words of knowledge. Okay, so just so you guys know, the sons of Issachar, the Bible says that they knew the times and seasons they knew the times and seasons and what to do, meaning they, God prophetically showed them this is what's happening now in this season, and here's what you need to do in this season. I feel like there's a lot of Issachar prophets that actually are carrying, it's a, it's a very unusual anointing. You have it very strongly. Tony, uh, um, Tommy um, Ariomi has it. Yes. Um, Jeremiah Johnson has it. Um, these guys have it very strongly. I feel like it's such a beautiful gift because it leads the body into instruction for that moment, which is so necessary. But I think more people have it than realize because they're not using this example to recognize that the things they're going through could actually be a prophetic walking out of a season. And God wants to speak to him through it. How do they break through that? I mean, is there a difference? Is, is the Issachar anointing impartable? Or, you know, do you have to listen to an Issachar prophet to get it, to get what's happening for that time and season? You know, that's a lot of questions in one ask, but I'm going to cut you loose on it. Yeah, great question, though. You know, to me, it's like every aspect of the prophetic is the son of Issachar anointing impartable? I think it is, but I think even more it's workable and developable. No, and it, in a way, what you're asking is if you're not a in the office of a son of Issachar prophet, can you still have son of Issachar prophetic understanding? Absolutely. It's just like you don't have to be in the office of prophet to grow in the prophetic. Every child of God hears his voice. So every child of God can begin to work with God to discern the times. I'll tell you the key, Katie, and it's one of the scriptures God's really highlighting. It's Isaiah 60, verse 2. Mm. And about a year and a half ago, the Lord spoke to me, because like many prophets and prophetic voices out there, I was one declaring we were in an Isaiah 60 season, because we have been. But about a year and a half ago, the Lord clearly spoke to me and said, stop declaring it's an Isaiah 60 season. Start declaring it is an Isaiah 60 season 
opportunity. And the key to the opportunity is verse 2. And this ties in with the son of Issachar anointing of discerning the times. Because in verse 2, it says, behold, the darkness. Behold, darkness will cover the earth. God doesn't say murmur and complain about the darkness. Be afraid about the darkness. Duck and cover till the darkness passes. Wow. Ignore the darkness. Be wow. freaked out by the darkness. He says, behold it. He wants us to see it. Why? Because we're here to deal with it. So we behold the darkness. We allow God to highlight what's going on in a season. But then the key is we let the kingdom of God arise in us. We don't let the kingdom of our flesh. We don't let irritation, bitterness, frustration, oh fear, discouragement yeah. arise. We let the kingdom of God arise. When we do, the promise is the glory of the Lord will appear upon us. And the glory is absolutely his presence, power, and personality. But the glory is the fullness of God's goodness. So that includes discernment. That includes understanding. That includes revelation. That includes wisdom. So when we're willing to be aware of the things that are going on around us, but we don't give place to frustration, which I did for three days going from gas station to gas station. But when I had a moment of stillness, I was actually at the end of my day, and I was at peace because I'd solved the problem. And the Lord broke in and was like, hey, I was trying to get you to see something in the midst of all this, but you were so focused on sorting it yourself, dealing with wow. the frustration and irritation. Once I'd stilled, I realized, wait, a, we have the solution all along, and B, there's a prophetic word for the body of Christ in this wow. that God wants me to deliver. So in all the wow. things that are going on, because let's get real, darkness is going to increase on the earth and on the people, but not on the people of God, because we're in Christ. We are in Goshen in Christ. We are people of, in, and with the light. So we need to be aware that we can arise and shine for our light has come, and we can behold the darkness, but not be impacted by the darkness. But the key is let the kingdom of God arise in you, not the kingdom of irritation and the flesh or any of those other things. And then knowing that the glory of God will appear upon us, that includes things like understanding, revelation, solution, and authority. So those prophetic experiences that you're having that you haven't been aware of, God's going to start unpacking for you. He's going to start giving you discernment. And then it's not just going to be a knowing of what's going on. It's going to be a knowing of how to respond to what's going on in the authority authority you also already have. Okay. Robert and I are going to minister out of that in a minute because a lot of you have been missing the prophetic unction God has for you, missing the prophetic direction that he wants to give to you to lead and guide your life and your path because you've allowed frustration, anger. Man, I'm, I'm talking, I'm preaching to myself right now <laughs> and everything else to come upon you. So we're going to minister to you. So please make sure you're sharing the broadcast. But first, as before we go into the ministry time, I've got to just bring up this really quickly of the book that you have, Realms of Power. Okay, this is incredible. Uh, I want you to tell the story really quickly before we minister but you actually received the download of this when you were sitting in your Jeep. Like, it just all came. and But you were in the midst of, of stuff. So talk about how you got this and what's in it real quick before we minister. Yeah, absolutely, Katie. So I was just, I wasn't being like an author or a minister or anything that day. I wasn't even being extra like holy and devoted. I was out running errands for my wife and I was leaving one shop. I got in my Jeep and I'm, I'm before I throw it in reverse, all I'm thinking is what's the next errand I'm going to run for Uri? And all of a sudden God completely fills my Jeep with his presence in the parking lot. And he outlines every single chapter of this book to me. He gives me the realm of power. He Whoa. gives me the scriptural proof of it. He gives me key points to make to help people see and understand the realm of power that they have in Christ. Whoa. And he gave me activation steps to make it simple for everybody to start moving in these realms of power. The reason God Whoa. did this is he knew we'd be where we are right now. And he wants not just an encouraged and equipped church, but an empowered church. And this book will help you tap into 12 transformative realms of power in the Holy Spirit. And just some of them are like the power to work miracles, the power of favor, the power to create wealth, the power to shift atmospheres. But there's 12 realms of power that you'll clearly 
biblically see that you already have in Christ authority and realms of power you already have in Christ. You'll clearly see it in the Word. You'll clearly come to understand it through each short chapter, and then you'll be given keys to start operating in those realms of power to establish the realm in your life. The book is all about learning how to plug into untapped realms of power in the Holy Spirit. Okay, look, those are realms we all need to walk in and possess. Realms of gifts, realms of financial increase, realms of miracle working, realms of authority. I mean, this is real. And you know a book is, is God when somebody didn't just sit down and say, well, I'm going to look up every scripture about this or that and make a book out of it. When they actually received all of the download about it, like, and when it comes that fast, that is so God. So this book is ordained from God, and like Robert said, it came because to him that quickly in the Jeep, because God knew that we would need it now. So you need to get this, guys. Here's the graphic. We're going to put it up full screen right there. There's the QR code. Put your phone up to it. Let the link come down. Um, bam, you know. Get that link and go to it and get it. It's Realms of Power by Robert Hodgkin so that you can take, he said, activation steps, guys, for you to easily walk into these realms with simple activation steps. Okay, let's minister. We got 12 minutes left, and I know we have a little bit more teaching, but I just want to minister out of people, you know, they've been letting frustration and aggravation get to them instead of being... Um, opportunistic as going, okay, what's God saying here? What's God have for me here? And developing the Issachar anointing and walking in that prophetic experience and, and then being able to release the authority they already have through the experience. So can we like break stuff off of people, minister and release decrees over them? Yeah, absolutely. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare... Jesus. The burning bush breakthrough firepower of God is hitting you. And just what Moses experienced in Exodus 3, you're going to experience right now, where everything that had blocked, hindered, and delayed, and kept Moses on the backside of nowhere and in self-pity, it was all dealt with with one encounter with God through his burning bush breakthrough firepower. And I declare that burning bush breakthrough firepower is coming upon you right now. And everything that's blocked, hindered, delayed, or interfered with you walking in the fullness of of who you are in, with, and for Christ is being dealt with and is being removed. I declare the eyes of your spirit are opening right now. And where you've only seen the storms, you're now going to see the opportunity in the storms. And you're going to be remi reminded and you're going to remember who you are in Christ and the authority that you have. And you will stand in that authority, speak to those storms, and they will bow. And I declare an awareness coming upon you easily, a great grace for you to become aware of how God is speaking to you through your experiences. How you've, you, somebody is saying, oh my gosh, I get it. I have been asking God to train my hands to war. I've been complaining about him doing exactly what I asked. And you're going to start seeing that this has been him training your hands to war. And experiences are going to become words of knowledge for you. And they're going to become opportunities for you to turn your ear, turn your thoughts, turn your mind, and turn your hearts to God. And he will speak to you and he will show you oh what to do, and you will see not only the season that you're in, but how to partner with him for victory in that season. Gosh, I can't even improve on those decrees. If you receive them, then you need to chat in. I receive it. Okay, now, I, I love how part of this prophetic guide that you have, um, you got Romans 12.12, 12 which is, you know, be glad for all God is planning for you. Be patient in trouble and always be prayerful. Always be prayerful. And you felt like this wasn't just a scripture. This was for 2024. Um, just elaborate on that because then I want to talk about the great falling away that you also have been receiving words about from the Lord. Yeah, absolutely, Katie. It was actually the morning of December 29th, 2023, when I was in my prayer time. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Romans 12, 12 will be a key strategic scripture, my how-to scripture for the body of Christ in 2024. And 
You know me, Katie, I have the duh anointing. God makes things really simple for me, which I love. And as I'm meditating on, and I'm going to read it out of the New Living, be glad for all God is planning for you, be patient in trouble, and always be prayerful. That's the version he gave me. Yeah. And all of a sudden, as I'm meditating on this strategy, it hits me. Wait, Romans 12, 12, 12 plus 12 is 24. Yeah, and I on. had one of those great duh moments of God's not only really wise, insightful, and helpful, he's yeah. super clever. I mean, yeah. of course, his word for 2020. 24 would add up to 24. 24. But the key is for us to be glad for all God is planning for us. That doesn't mean we're glad for the challenge. Is It means we are glad that God has something for us in the challenge. That's yeah. when we start understanding we're having a prophetic experience, where God's giving us awareness, downloads, strategies. That's where we shift from seeing the storm to seeing the opportunity in the storm. And it, what's al it's what allows us to be patient in trouble. That doesn't mean we sit back during the trouble and we become inactive. It means we become patient in the sense of hope-filled, joy-filled, zealously expectant of God in us and through us in those situations. And then we step in to that authority that we already have by the end of this, always be prayerful. So we know God has something good for us in it. We will wait upon the Lord, not, okay, God, I'm sitting back, do something, but God, not, hey, help, we're drowning here, but God, help me see the opportunity and how to move in the authority. And then the main way we're going to operate in that authority is to be prayerful, is to check in with God and get the strategies, the battle plans, the blueprints, Amen. the tactics, and then be prayerful, decreeing and declaring and operating in our authority. Amen. Look, guys, chat in. Uh, God has something for me in the challenge because that is truth. God works in all things for the good of those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay, so you can expect that he's working right now inside this debacle that you are battling against to bring something amazing for you through it. As long as you remain in that place of ex expectation where you don't get bitter, where you don't get um, angry or upset or offended by it, and you walk through it expecting God to bless you through that situation. Now, you know, we touched on this and I want you to expand on it. We got six minutes left about the great falling away. God gave you a word for this year and we've already seen that. I don't know if this is the direction you're going because we didn't talk about it before the broadcast, but we've already seen that with certain attacks on leaders and certain leaders falling away and falling into deep, you know, very grievous sin. Um, what are you getting from the Lord concerning this? You're absolutely right, Katie. There is a great falling away because whenever there is the exposure of leaders, the enemy piggybacks on that to make people feel discouraged and hopeless wow. and feel like, well, if that person can't make it, I can't. And the enemy's always trying to get there to be a great falling away from the faith when those things are going wow. on. But when I received this word from the Lord and he said there'll be a great falling away from 2024, exactly like you, I went to that thought and I kind of started to feel heavy and grieved for the body. But what was weird, Katie, is I could feel the Lord's joy. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm missing something because nobody's more grieved by that falling away from the faith in the Lord. And he spoke to me and he said, in the midst of a great falling away from the faith, there's coming to my body for those, I'm going to read it exactly as he gave it to me. Okay. For those who are hungry, they will connect to a great grace for a great falling away in 2024. Not a falling away from the faith, but a, but in their faith, they will see a great falling away of those things that have been limiting them. Negative emotions, consistent distractions, patterns of procrastination, and even some past due relationships. So the the reason this fits in with everything else we've been talking about, Katie, is so much of what keeps us from moving in the authority wow. that we have. So much of what keeps us from understanding what God is doing in the midst of experiences that we have is because we give place to those things like negative emotions, consistent distractions, patterns of procrastination. In other words, we let the kingdom of our flesh or the kingdom of self arise as opposed to the kingdom of God. But there's a wow. great grace coming upon us in 2024 for all those things that kept us from moving in our authority to fall away. And we will much more easily be able to see the opportunity, step into the authority, and command the storm to be still, and we'll see it be still. Well, I love how God breathed 
that grace upon that word because it's been focused on the falling away of leaders which has grieved the body so bad and the bodies felt betrayed by people that they loved and respected but instead the Lord breathed life into this world saying no I'm going to cause the stuff that's holding you back to be to fall away from you this is an incredible word let's minister out of that we've only got three minutes I'm, I release you go in the name of Jesus Christ I release the great grace for you to connect with, for you to receive, for you to flow in. And I declare in that grace, it will be easy for you to choose to let go of those things that have blocked, hindered, interfered, or delayed you in the past. I declare a great grace to let go of negative habits, negative emotions, every negative thing that has slowed you down or tripped you up in the past. Those days are done and there's a great grace. And one of the most important things is there's a grace for past due relationships to fall away and for you to find the running mates and the tribe you have in this season who are going to continue to help you remember who you are and operate in what you have. You're going to have a group of mighty allies that come alongside you and you do the same for them where you remember that you've let go of the things that have limited you and you begin operating in a level of prophetic awareness you have always had but not moved in and a level of authority you've always had but not moved in. This is your season for for prophetic revelation and divine authority and I bless you with the great grace to step into it now in Jesus' name. Yes God and I command a strife in your marriage to fall away. I command sickness on your body to fall away. I command negativism and criticism and judgment and offense in your soul to fall away. I command poverty that has kept you uh, hindered in your growth for your ministry, your business, and your family to fall away. I I I command divisions in your church and your company and your business to fall away. I I I I command all of the restrictions in your soul that caused you uh, harm like grieving and anxiety and depression to fall away from you in the name of Jesus in Jesus name now let's quickly we're going to put up a free copy that you can get of these prophetic words that Robert Hodgkin has for 2024 there it is look um, oh that's realms of power go ahead keep that up there this is realms of power guys and then we're going to put up the graphic for the free copy of the prophetic words realms of power guys this is the download that came in the car, it's like there's activation steps. You're going to get the realms of power for miracle working, realms of power for financial increase, realms of power for authority, realms of power for all the above. You've got to get this. Go put your phone up to that and let the link come down so you can order this. This was a download from the Lord. So you got to have it. And then this, let's go to the free offer now. That is a free offer. These are the prophetic words for Robert, from Robert Hodgkin for 2024. We've been talking about it on this show and the last show that Robert did with us. And you need to get it. It's free download. Go to it right now. Get that uh, that link so that you can get these this free download. So look, come back to me. You need them both, guys. You need the book so that you can learn how to possess the realms and you need that free download so you can understand what's happening. It's the car anointing for 2024. 20 seconds left, my friend. I love having you on the broadcast. I love every time I get to spend time with you or see you. Thank you so much, Katie. Tell your wife I love her so much, okay? I will. Okay. Okay, awesome. What a great show, guys. And I love you too. And I will see all of you next week week.